in this video, we're going to look at uh, parallel lines and some angle relationships that are formed when parallel lines are cut by a transversal. And so first, before we start talking about the angle relationships, we have some new vocabulary we have to deal with. So our first new vocabulary word is transversal. And a transversal is a line that passes through two lines in the same plane at two distinct points. So I have two lines drawn, line one and line two, and then a line three that hits, intersects, passes through those other two lines in two distinct points. And then we say line three is a transversal of line one and, and line two, or line three cuts, it's a transversal that cuts line one and line two. Now we often see these um, used in relation to parallel lines, but they don't have to be parallel, they just have to fit this definition here, right? Okay, so another vocab that's not too new, but it's gonna be important, so I'm gonna remind everybody of it, is corresponding angles. And corresponding angles are two angles which are in the same relative position, okay? And so we've seen that with similar figures, or sorry, I should say congruent figures. Like if I wanna say pentagon A, B, C, D, E is congruent to pentagon F, G, H, I, and J, I know by the way they are named and by the way they are marked that A corresponds to F, they match up. They're in the same relative position, right? First letter in the name. Uh, and angle C and angle H are corresponding angles because same relative position, right? They are third letter in the naming, right? And they are marked as congruent, okay, in this case. So I can say angle A corresponds to angle F and angle C corresponds to angle H. So it's just same relative position, okay? Now, um, a little reminder, remember the order of the letters matters when naming because of this whole correspondence issue, okay? So let's go back to parallel lines and see what this has to do with them. So I have two parallel lines. Line one and line two are parallel. They have the parallel markings, right? And line three is a transversal that cuts them. And I've marked uh, the angles formed by uh, the transversal and the parallel lines. And we already know some stuff is true about these. So if I just like ignore one of the lines, um, and I look at line three and line one, they form a set of vertical angles and so do line three and line two, right? Um, and so since they form vertical angles, I can already mark up a bunch of stuff as being congruent, right? I know by the vertical angle conjecture, conjecture two, C2, that angle one is congruent to angle three. I also know that angle four uh, and angle two are congruent. And then I also know down here that angle five and angle seven are congruent and that angle eight and angle six are congruent, all by C2 or the vertical angle conjecture, right? Now, um, what I wanna know is if there are any congruencies between the separate sets of vertical angles. So it's like, are like some of the angles here congruent, some of the angles there? And so let's, let's explore that, okay? So now let's talk about corresponding angles as they relate to parallel lines, okay? So it's, it's kind of obvious when you're talking about polygons, um, which angles correspond because there's a, a definitive shape, a closed shape, but it's a little bit harder to see with um, parallel lines, okay? So when I say corresponding, I mean in relative position to the transversal and the parallel lines. So if I look at angle one and angle five, Angle one and angle five are said to be corresponding angles because they are both above the transversal and to the right of that parallel line, sets of parallel lines, okay? And I can also say angles two and six are corresponding because both angles two and six are below the transversal and to the right of the parallel lines, right? Similarly. I can say eight and four because they are both above the transversal and to the left. And I can also say seven and three, right? Because they're both below the transversal and to the left. So that's what corresponding angles are in parallel lines. Same relative position in relation to the transversal and on the same side of, the, of each parallel line. 
So now that I know what corresponding angles are, let's um, do a little bit of uh, uh, informal measuring to see what's true. So I have a copy here on this, uh, this paper. It's called patty paper. It's like tracing paper. Um, and I've copied the angle. So I have angle one and angle two copied onto the, the patty paper. And so if I kind of scooch it down here, oh, oh, check it out. It looks like the corresponding angles, right, match up. So angle five and angle one look like they're congruent. And angle two and angle six, the corresponding angles look like they're congruent. And so um, if I were to draw more sets of parallel lines, cut by different transversals, all at different angles, um, I'm gonna see the same thing happen over and over again, okay? And that's because corresponding angles are congruent, right? When I have parallel lines cut by a transversal. Um, and so that means angle one and angle five are congruent, angles four and eight, angles three and seven, and angles two and six. So I'm not gonna prove that corresponding angles are congruent in this video, because it would make this video like 20 minutes long. Um, so instead, uh, let's go with, uh, you trust me, okay? Corresponding angles are congruent, and I wanna know what other angles are congruent. And so we're gonna use our logic to determine which pair or which sets of angles are uh, are congruent in parallel lines cut by a transversal. Angles. Let's just start off with uh, angle one and angle five, right? Because they are both to this time to the right of the transversal, and they are both above their respective parallel lines. Um, so I know that the corresponding angles, and I'm going to abbreviate that CA. Angle one is congruent to angle five, right? And if I want to go through the whole list, um, I know two and six are also con are also corresponding angles, right? So angle two is congruent to angle six, and then corresponding angles four and eight uh, are also congruent, and then three and seven are also congruent. Okay. Now I didn't mark them all because I want to. Uh, think about, well, if, if corresponding angles are indeed congruent, uh, what other types of angles are congruent in this picture, right? And so I'm going to use logic and uh, my previous conjectures, namely conjecture two, the vertical angle conjecture. Uh, by the vertical angle conjecture, I know that angle three, right, is also a congruent to angle one by vertical angles. And I know angle seven is congruent to angle five, right, by vertical angles. And so what that means is, oh, hey, angle three and angle five are also congruent, right? Angle three is congruent to oh, oh, angle five, okay? So using that same chain of logic, I can look at um, angles four and two and eight and six, and I can conclude that angle two and angle eight are also congruent, right? Because four and eight are corresponding, two and six are corresponding, um, four and two are vertical, eight and six are vertical. Therefore, angle two has to be congruent to angle eight. Now you'll notice that these pairs are on opposite sides of the transversal, but inside the parallel lines. So this set of angles, three and five and two and eight, are called alternate interior angles, right? Be alternate meaning alternate sides of the transversal, right? Meaning opposite sides of the transversal. Interior means inside the parallel lines, right? That's what it means to be alternate interior. So your angles three and five and two and eight, alternate interior angles are congruent. Now I can do something similar with angle four and angle six, right? Four and eight are corresponding by vertical angles. Eight and six are congruent, therefore, angle four is congruent to angle six, right? And I can do something similar with one and seven, right? Angle one uh, is congruent to angle seven, right? because uh, one and five are corresponding, five and seven are vertical, therefore one and seven have to be congruent. And we call these alternate exterior angles. 
alternate because they're on either side of the transversal, exterior because they are outside of the parallel lines. I have a ton of sets of congruent angles when I have parallel lines cut by a transversal. And so I have a really long conjecture that has three parts, okay? So C3 is called the parallel lines conjecture. And it says if I'm given two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, then each of the following must be true. Corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, remember corresponding are in the same relative position. Alternate interior angles are congruent, okay? Alternate either side of the transversal, inside the parallel lines. And then alternate exterior angles are also congruent. So either side of the transversal, outside of the parallel lines, okay? So write these down, this is super important, and this is gonna be a lot to keep track of. But with practice, you'll get it. It'll start to become like something you'll notice immediately whenever you see parallel lines. But it's gonna take a little bit of time, okay? If I have a conjecture, I want to know if the converse is true. So if I have something like this, where the lines are not marked as parallel, I don't know they're parallel, but the corresponding angles are marked as congruent. And if I know they're congruent, then I know a whole bunch of stuff, right? I know that this angle has to be congruent by vertical angles, right? I know by linear pairs that this angle, right, has to be congruent to this angle here. And same thing here and here. And I end up with the same sets of congruent angles that I had before. And so actually, this time, the converse is actually true. And that gives us conjecture four. It's called the converse of parallel lines conjecture. And remember, it swaps, right? If two lines are cut by a transversal to form pairs of congruent, and once again, this has three parts, corresponding angles or alternate interior or alternate exterior angles, then the lines are parallel. I only need one set to be true. Like if I know that corresponding angles are congruent, then I know they're parallel because I'm gonna get the alternate interior and I'm gonna get the alternate exterior by vertical angles and linear pairs, right? And so, or if I know alternate interior, same, I can logically go through and get all of them to be congruent, right? So the converse in this case is actually true.